Today's video is going to be a little different, but I think you're going to like it. Every single week, I get a lot of questions in my direct messages on LinkedIn, Instagram, and by email from trucking business owners. Whether they have one truck or 500, about how to grow their business. And the main problem they usually have is everything related to finding, hiring, and keeping qualified truck drivers to see their empty trucks. So I spent the past few days looking through my messages and compiling some of the most common and not so common questions on how to get qualified truck drivers and hire them consistently. It's almost impossible to answer them all, but today I'm going to try and do just that. I promise all of these are going to be of value. So stick around and let's get into it. The first question I get a lot is, I keep only getting unqualified truck drivers. Where do I find the good drivers? Okay, that's an interesting one and let me tell you why. Okay, a big mindset shift that has to happen here. Let me explain. Think about the qualified, good, hardworking drivers that you employ right now within your business. If you have a few, I'm sure you do. Do you think he or she is out there looking for another job? I hope not. And they're busy hauling your loads, delivering to your customers, getting the work done, right? So how do you expect to find the same kind of driver on job boards or through a recruitment agency? That doesn't happen because they're busy doing the work. They're busy hauling the loads, they're busy hauling it to your customers, taking care of the business for you. The way you can attract those drivers is by ethically influencing those kind of drivers at other trucking companies they are employed at, why working at your business is actually a better choice, right? And the way you can do that is by putting ads on social media. Now it may be something that you hear a lot, hey leverage social media and you may have even tried it and may not have had success. Because you haven't done it the right way, you may be finding issues in why that method is not successful for your business. Because I can tell you right now, over 500 trucking companies that we work with, that's the single most effective strategy that works for them time and time again to hire most amount of drivers up front. And then there's so many things in the back end that we help them do with referrals and you know a referral program and so many more cool things that is gonna help you hire even more drivers. But the one thing that you can change right now to hire more qualified, better drivers is by stop looking at job boards, recruitment agencies, or even marketing agencies that just give you leads. You need to learn to bring this in-house, attract the driver that is already employed at another trucking company through a real strategy on social media because that's where they're hanging out and killing time just like me and you. And then they can directly apply to you, you can talk to them, get them hired and find more and more and more of those people. Next one that I get a lot from trucking businesses is, Amrit, am I offering a competitive pay since you talk to a lot of trucking companies? Okay, this varies and the way you can do this test for your own business is literally by asking one of your drivers to call other trucking companies in the area. Of course, ask one of your loyal drivers, give them this exercise. I know this is a little bit sneaky, but ask your driver to call other trucking companies wanting for a job, pretending to want a job, and then do your research. Have them probe into other trucking companies and ask them like, hey, how much are you paying? I have this much experience and I have a nephew who has two years experience. Where would you start, start that person at? How much minimum experience do you need for a driver to be hired? And you'll be able to find out what other people are paying, right? CPM wise, right? If they're paying 55 cents per mile base and you're paying 50, then you know you're five cents off for the same kind of trucking business. So try to do it in your hiring area. You'll know who your competitors are. So it's an easy, very easy exercise to do. Just people don't do it, that's all. So ask one of your loyal drivers to do it for you. Call five or 10 trucking companies, have them make a note, let them know back to you. Uh, have, them, have them report all those CPMs, hourly wage, all that back to you. So you can then see, are we in the ballpark or not? Okay, the next one that I hear is, are my recruiters dropping the ball in hiring drivers? This is a little bit of a juicy one. Why? Because it may not happen to smaller trucking companies. I hear this from fleet owners that run a trucking company from 80 trucks all the way to 1500 trucks. 
because that's when you tend to see a recruiting team, one recruiter, more than two recruiters, because anything less than 60 people usually have a safety director who's also doing recruiting most of the time. So you don't have like a dedicated recruiter anyways. But I do hear this a lot. And the way you can find that out is by seeing how much lead volume are you getting. So how many driver applications are you getting every single week? If you're getting, you know, a fair amount of driver applications, now fair is a very subjective word, but let me give you an example. So let's say you have five trucks that you need to seat this week, okay? You are a hundred truck fleet, you have, a five, you have five trucks to seat, and your recruiter is getting only five applications, like five long apps. That's horrible lead volume. If they're getting 40 long apps a week, that's a great lead volume. If they're getting 20, that's okay lead volume. So <clears throat> if they're getting anything between 20 to 40 and they're not able to hire a driver out of it, that's bad. And you also kind of have to track like the quality of long apps that you're getting to, right? If you're getting a lot, a lot of long apps, but they're not quality, like a lot of people just fail in the MVR or PSP report by your standards, then you have a lead issue, not a drive, uh, driver recruiter closing issue. So that's a next tier to it within itself. But if the quality is there, I would say if you are getting like 40 to 50% qualified long apps, then if you're not able to hire at least, you know, two to three people out of that, like out of the 40 applications that you got, 40 long apps that you got, 20 of them were actually qualified. Now out of the 20 long apps, if you're not able to convert at least three into a successful hire, you have a problem with your recruiters. I don't think I can give you a better example than this. And the other way you can do this is by listening into their calls. Like we do that totally with all the trucking companies that we work with in our advisory board, where we will actually give them a system where you can listen in to your recruiters calls and monitor them if they're running them properly, they have a structure, they're following a pattern and actually having a conversation that is going to convert that driver to a hire or a potential driver into a hire. So start listening into their calls and see how they conduct themselves. How many leads have they touched in a day? How do they report to you? At the same time as business owners, if you think that person is hardworking, is not a toxic uh, recruiter to your culture, it's most likely that they're just lacking training or they're lacking good qualified leads. Now that's something I'm speaking from experience. I hope that helps. Okay, next one I get is, how do I keep drivers after hiring them? This is a very broad topic to touch on, but I will give you the high level, very exact things you need to know. It's all about retention. Retention, 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 right? The way you can retain a driver is, first, being very honest and upfront about what you do as a business, so they know that this is what they can expect coming into your business, so your recruiters have to be doing a great job in being very honest because driver recruiters have a, every driver has a stigma that every driver recruiter is out there trying to lie to them to get them into their truck, right? That, that's how the drivers think about a driver recruiter. So the driver recruiters have to do more than traditionally they would do to hire a driver to make sure that the driver believes that what they're telling them is the truth and that's how the company operates, good or bad. And driver recruiters should tell the driver, hey, these are things that are tough at our business, so I'm just telling you that upfront coming into this so there are no surprises. Okay, so you've gotten take care of the, you took care of the front end. Now let's talk about the back end. Your driver managers, your planners, your dispatchers, however you have your trucking business set up, you need to make sure that all these people who deal with the driver every single day, give them the loads, get the loads moving, are great extra words who are great at building rapport, good communicators. If they're just computer button clickers, you're probably gonna see a higher turnover. It's, it's just natural, okay? But if you have good driver managers or dispatchers who like to know about the driver's personal life, check in with them, make sure they're taken care of on the road, think a little bit beyond just like, hey, here's your load, hope you have a good day and make sure you deliver on time, you're always gonna have turnover, right? Because you're dealing with human, you're just asking them to work, 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 work. Go an extra mile and talk with them about how's their day been? Are they getting the miles that they were promised by the recruiters? Like just 
quick check-ins personally and professionally will go a long ways. The next tier to that is it depends the kind of freight that you haul to. If you're a very heavy OTR business, you're going to have a higher turnover because most drivers like to be home. It's just the nature of the fact. You have guys on your team, or I should say drivers, you have drivers out there who like OTR, but a fair majority wants to be home as often as they can while making good money. So if you run a lot of OTR, you're going to have turnover. If you run regional, you're going to have less turnover. If you run local, home daily, you're going to have very low turnover. So nature of the work plays a lot of the role into this as well. Make sure the driver is told everything up front, honestly, from your driver recruiter from the get-go. And then your driver managers are doing check-ins personally and professionally. Are we fulfilling our promises as a business? And always try to keep giving or acquiring freight that is going to get the driver home more often, but it still pays them very well. Those thing, three things together will absolutely help you retain a lot more drivers than you are currently. I can tell you 10 more strategies, but these are the evergreen things that will never change to retain a driver at your business. Okay, last but not the least, how many people should I have on my recruiting team? I hear this again from trucking companies that run 80 trucks all the way to 5,000 trucks. The way you can figure that out is if you have zero to 80 trucks or even 110 trucks, you only need one recruiter and maybe half time processor. That's it. If you go from 100 to 200 trucks, you need two recruiters well you will need two people on your team you will need one recruiter and one processor like an admin person that's going to run all the mvrs the long application schedule uh, travel booking all that kind of stuff every 100 trucks that you add you will add another recruiter and then at 400 to 500 truck level you will probably have to add another processor or an admin person because the amount of paperwork and scheduling that's going to be there you can still get away to like 500 trucks with one processor and four to five recruiters i think five would be still excessive i would still stick with like four recruiters and that would be your number so every 100 trucks that you add you add one more recruiter the other variable to this would be if you run a regional fleet like a regional operation where the drivers are home every weekend or they're home every like third or fourth night or every second night, you will not have as many recruit. You will not need as many recruiters on your team because you don't need to have to hire that many drivers because you don't lose as many, as many drivers. If you're hiring more drivers is because you're growing that, that that's how it should look like. That's the rule of thumb. One zero to 150 trucks. You can get away with one recruiter after right around 200 truck you will need two every 100 trucks that you add from there you will need one more one more recruiter on your team and listen if you are having issues hiring drivers right now the best thing you can do is take this advice and just start trying new methods mentioned in this video check out my channel for other tutorials and shameless plug we have a proven system on recruiting qualified drivers where myself and my team will come into your trucking business and install a driver hiring system in-house which will help you quite literally double your fleet in 30 days or less if you run a trucking business that has over 10 trucks and want to scale to the moon this is exactly for you we have hundreds of trucking companies who say publicly how working with us help them hire more and better qualified drivers than they ever have and they were able to hit their targets so if that's interesting to you check out the link in the description if you've got any more questions comment below if i get enough i'll do a part two and thanks again for watching i appreciate all the support and i'll see you in the next one